In this video, what we're going for is this as a result. And this would be pinching open, and this is pinching close. So here's the demo character, and here's the input folder. This is the input mapping context. Let's just create an input action of camera zoom. Okay, so nothing actually has to change in there, but in our mapping context, let's add a mapping. Okay, this is the demo one. So for mobile, you'll want to use touch two. So when two fingers touch the screen, and then I'll add another one for middle mouse button for demonstration on the computer. Okay, so in our character we have a spring arm, and all we do is set the length, target arm length, on triggered. So the value of that will depend on a macro that I'm going to use, pinch camera zoom. Okay, so first thing we need is a start execution pin. So I'm using a macro so I can make use of local variables. Local floats to be specific. So I don't have to go around making a bunch of variables in the character itself. So we need two of them. This one is touch distance. And this one is the camera distance. And on start, we're just assigning these as initial values. So touch distance, we have to make a function. But for camera distance, we just have to get our spring arm, get target arm length. Okay, so let's go ahead and make that function being get touch distance. So all we're doing is we're getting the two locations of the two fingers and subtracting that to get the distance. So we have to get the pawns controller. And in player controller, they have these functions, get input touch state. Of touch one and two. I'm just going to make a vector out of these, a vector 2D, X and Y, and X and Y. And then we subtract them for the distance, or sorry, the difference, and then we can go vector length And that gives us the actual distance. Again, since I'm on PC, and you may want to test this on PC, because every time you launch to the phone, the mobile device, it takes like three minutes versus just playing in the viewport. So this is very handy. I have these two nodes, get platform name. And if it equals windows, then we use a select down here, select node by dragging out there. And if it's called windows, that is the condition. So if we're on Windows, come out from player controller again, get mouse position is another function. Doing the same thing, make a 2D vector, and 
So if we're on Windows, if it's true, we use the mouse position instead. If false, because the only other option would be mobile, false is mobile. Um, and I don't have to subtract because, again, we're using zero as the reference of the other finger. So no sense in subtracting zero, essentially. That will just give us the length of the actual position of the mouse. So we can drag in... Uh, touch distance to our pinch camera zoom macro uh, and set that to pure. So touch distance is the local variable and the value is the result from the get touch distance function. So this will be triggered every tick. Uh, so we, what we want to do is take the current touch distance, right? and subtract the variable here, which is, remember, the starting touch distance. And why don't we just demonstrate that? So all I'm going to do for now is print string. So get touch distance gives us the distance between the two fingers. Again, on PC, pretend it's up here in the corner. So there's very little difference up there. So from corner to corner, starting at the top uh, left, to the bottom right, that is the maximum distance. And that is what get touch distance does. So now let's see what pinch camera zoom does. Plug that into started and then into the print string. And right now, so we, we should be getting zero anywhere we click, right? Because it's resetting. All we want is the difference uh, during this zoom event. So anywhere we start, it should be zero and then it should start to change as we move and it should reset to zero each time we click again. So the way I want this to work is corner to corner like that should be the maximum zoom range. So this should be zoomed fully out and dragging it to the, the furthest corner should bring you fully zoomed in. To do that, we need to divide your current mouse position by the maximum mouse position, essentially. Let me get the multiplier. So we're getting a multiplier, right? And the value is the maximum divided by the minimum zoom distance. So let's create those variables. So it's max minus the minimum. That gives us the range. So we want to divide the range by the maximum possible length. So from corner to corner. So we can get viewport size. Turn that to vector length. Then we can multiply our current touch distance. 
and this is what translates distance on the screen to world camera distance. Finally, we can drag the product here into the output pin. And let's see what that gives us. This isn't working. Of course, remember to set these. So I'm doing uh, 1600 and the minimum will be 400. Okay, so that's pretty much going to be it. Okay, so let's see what happens when we plug it in to the actual arm length. Okay, so you see how it's snapping to zero every time. That's because we're not using this variable yet that we, that we uh, created, the camera distance. So it's saving the camera distance, but now we have to add it. There, see that? Now it's remembering where the camera was. So the next obstacle is you can infinitely zoom out. <laughs> There's one more thing as well. So remember, this is emulating a phone screen. And the first finger is up in the corner here. Typically, zooming this way would zoom in, right? Like spreading, that would zoom in. So we have to negate the value. So right in here, our multiply uh, node, we can just negate by adding another pin and setting that to negative one. And lastly, we just have to clamp, clamp the float within the range of our minimum and maximum values. So there, now spreading the touch distance zooms in. And I cannot zoom in past 400, uh, my set minimum. And I cannot zoom out past 1600, my set maximum. All right, well, that's pretty much it. Just remove the print string. And it should be good to go. But as always, I hope this was helpful. Leave a like if it was, and comment any questions you have. Thanks for watching.